Hello and welcome to the Caffeine Gaming Show. I'm Ahmet. I'm Gio. And we are here at Insomnia 63 and there is plenty to do. We have drone combat flight ball, which is with drones. It's football. It's kind of like a bit like Rocket League. Behind us, you've got the uh, PUBG tournament where there'll be 100 people playing LAN battles on LAN. So no one can complain about any internet connections when they die. What are you looking forward to? Personally, it's going to come as no surprise to anybody. I'm looking forward tomorrow over in the Belong Arena Clash area. There's going to be a big Overwatch tournament. Of course, I love my Overwatch. And then on Monday, we've also got the UKM, uh, the UK Masters Overwatch tournament as well. So I'm going to be watching a lot of Overwatch this weekend. Same as last time, you have Bring Your Own Computer here, and it looks just as big. I can see literally hundreds of heads bopping around playing on their computers. There's also Nintendo here with Mario, and there's also Sony here, PlayStation, and they've got Fortnite set up. So there's plenty of big things to do here. Yeah, and if you feel like upgrading your PC, we've got people like Overclockers and Corsair from whom you can buy loads of different parts, new peripherals, whatever you want. And if you fancy escaping back to the 80s or 90s, there's a massive retro game area as well, filled with pinball, old PS1 games, SNES, whatever you want to play. Where? Let's go. Let's go there now. Where? Where? It's over there, dude. Let's go, man. <laughs> So while we're here, we're going to get the chance to speak to some content creators, some casters, and maybe even some developers. So we're really going to get a, a taste of what's going on here in the world of Insomnia. And we're also going to get a chance to play drone combat flight ball. And I'm still deliberating whether or not I'm going to have Gio on my team. She wasn't speaking with much confidence earlier when she see the game going on. So I want to say it's going to be war, but I don't think I can really uh, provide the battle that you're looking for. But, well, we should, well, then you be on my team. Then. I'm either going to be sandbagging or I'm just going to be like an easy opponent. It's easy, it's like flying a helicopter. Yeah, I'm secretly a pro. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Coming up on tonight's show. Geo talks to a man with pink hair. We interview several YouTubers. Geo watches Overwatch. Ahmet plays indie games. Geo talks Overwatch with Overwatch people. And we beat a bunch of YouTubers at Drone Football. Hey guys, welcome back to the Caffeine Gaming Show. Uh, we're here live at Meltdown again, and today is all about insomnia. Uh, so literally this time last week, we were coming back from insomnia. Um, it was an amazing weekend. Uh, hopefully you guys went, if you could. If not, you've got to come to I-64. <laughs> so guys, uh, what was your favorite part of insomnia? Ladies first. <laughs> Thank you. I think for me, it has to be the BYOC. Like I spent a lot of time there, um, and I just love the whole like vibe of this massive land that had, what, what 2,000 people there, something crazy yeah. like that. Oh, what, so BYOC is, is it only land or mainly land? Yeah, it's just a land. Like, oh, really? That's why people go. They bring How about if you want to play a game online but no one else is playing, just land by your own? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you, just can, bring you, your you can do whatever you want. But, like, oh, what, so you can like, play online? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, right, right, oh, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. But, like, it is a land party, like, yeah, first yeah. and foremost. And uh, I just loved hanging out with people there. I loved the kind of, like, vibe that was going on. Like, people from, not even just across the country, but from across the world. Like, there were people hanging out with, with my friends who had come from various parts of Europe. You know, and uh, I just love that vibe that everyone was like friends, everyone's hanging out. We just get in the car, go buy some KFC, come back, play some Overwatch. Like, I loved it. It's <laughs> great. So, we have tons and tons of interviews, so I'm getting my chat up. Uh, tons and tons of interviews with uh, some YouTubers. Um, we've got, uh, we've talked to some indie developers, talked to some people in the BYC, a lot of Overwatch people. Um, funny <laughs> that. And we even take on some YouTubers at Drone Football. That was my favourite bit. Yeah, that, that was the best good. bit. It's so, fantastic. Um, yeah, but you were actually good at it. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> like, I some like, of us can't relate. <laughs> I like it. Well, I said, if you've flown a helicopter before, it's easy. So, Who's flown a helicopter before? No, yeah. Well, so it's as yeah. easy as flying a helicopter. Like, that, that easy is what I'm trying to say. Right. Like. Well, you've never seen me play GTA. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> I can't fly helicopters. <laughs> anyway, we've got uh, the drone football coming up at the end where we take on Grant Hine, Alfie Days and Sean O'Connor. So, um, 
and smash them, yeah, by the way. We, yeah, we, we've already told you guys what the result is. We, we beat them. Uh, they weren't too pleased about it. Yeah, that. you weren't very quiet about it. <laughs> you can't let the world know. Anyway, guys, right, um, so our first interview is with a YouTuber called uh, Jenison, also known as John. He's in the chat. He's in the chat. Hey, John. Hey, John. <laughs> um, so this is our interview with Jenison and about his channel and his plans for the future of his channel, really. So here we go. Right. So I'm here with John, and you run a YouTube channel called Genazon. Um, I was wondering if you could like tell us a bit about it. Yeah, so it started originally as I think most YouTube channels did with uh, Call of Duty. That was back in the day, about five, six years ago. Um, I started with that, and then moved on to FIFA, which ne neither of the two I'm, I kind of was there for a while. I was a year in each kind of thing. Then I moved on to Minecraft, and that's kind of where I am now, um, still. So for the last kind of three years, I've been doing that. Um, and that's where my channel's been kind of based. So yeah, I've, I've just moved through the games and now doing Minecraft kind of all the time, but I do want to change that, so. Yeah, I've heard about this. So like, what can you tell us about your plans for your big changes? Yeah, so I want to kind of focus my YouTube more on um, kind of tech stuff and uh, products and stuff like that, because I think that's kind of a better YouTube audience. Um, I found that at the moment that a lot of people are moving games to Twitch. Um, which is where I'd like to go for my gaming because that, that's just kind of a whole different community and I, I, I kind of like that kind of aspect. So I think I want to move games to streaming on Twitch um, and YouTube for kind of tech stuff and, and stuff like that and, and events like this, like vlogs and stuff like that. So that's what I kind of want to move towards. That sounds pretty exciting. So with Twitch stuff, are you going to stick to just Minecraft? Are you going to shake it up a bit? Like what's the plan? Yeah, so I want to move on to different games. I want to have an audience that are more based around watching me as a creator rather than the game that it is. So creating that community is going to be the kind of toughest challenge to start with. But I think once that's going, then yeah, any game I can do is what I what I want to do. You know, if I want to play this certain game for a day, then that's what I want to do. Um, I really want to move away from Minecraft. I've been there for a long time. Um, three or so years and I think it is time to move on with that. I'll still, you know, if something new comes in, I'd like to do it, but, um, and I, I think that will be the, the first transition is kind of, I want to start dual streaming, so on Twitch and YouTube and yeah. then eventually transfer it over. So that's the kind of plans in terms of that. But yeah, I want to kind of ease out of Minecraft and into games like uh, Fortnite, Rocket League, stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I enjoy, maybe a bit of Overwatch. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's the kind of stuff I enjoy playing. Yeah, so kind of the more esportsy yeah, kind of exactly, competitive yeah. games. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. That sounds pretty cool. So as Insomnia as an event has evolved, we've had uh, them inviting like creators such as yourself. So have you met anyone this weekend who you've got like a load of inspiration from or just like seen anything that's just made you want to be like, I want to go home and I want to work on this stuff? Yeah, so I think it's always at these events, it's always the same person. So Grant Hines, he uh -huh. is a, like the way that he produces his content and makes everything is is, is a way that I want to kind of follow. And I think just his whole community with the South African gaming is insane. Like their, their community is ridiculous. So um, in a good way. So th that's the person I kind of look up to in a way in, in terms of his content. But yeah, I've met a load of guys around there, around this gaming scene that's just mind blows me what they're doing with their stuff. So it, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I always find that it's one of those things that you meet loads of passionate people and it just rubs off on you yeah, and you just, you want to go work on like a million things yeah, at once. Yeah, it's like I haven't recorded for like five days, I just want to go home and just <laughs> upload like a hundred videos, but yeah, it's, it's definitely going to motivate me to, to get up to the higher level if I can. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, okay, other than like hanging out with all these like awesome creators and stuff, what other things have you been enjoying about i63? Just the, the, the ability to go and play games that I wouldn't necessarily get the time to or whatever, so um, the stuff like going to just, even the games that are already released stuff like PUBG and stuff like that I don't get time to just go and play PUBG yeah. but now I'm signed up for some tournament this afternoon it's like yeah let's go play PUBG um, and the indie games as well they've been really kind inviting me over give me some codes and stuff so I can go try them out oh, and nice. uh, yeah just to, just to get into smaller games like that that I don't generally see because just over bigger yeah. games just so beyond like meeting people doing meet and greet speaking to these cool people like Gran what else have you been doing at i63 that you've been loving uh, just the opportunity to play games, um, especially indie games, it's a really good place. The developers will come and talk to you and uh, I've been lucky enough to get some codes for some of the games as well. So and go home and actually play them. Um, but yeah, it's just a good opportunity to meet a load of people within the industry. Um, and yeah, we, we, we're signed up for a PUBG tournament now as well, which I'm not too confident about, but we'll see how that goes, um, I guess. Yeah, basically, as long as you don't come last, you're fine. Perfect. I, I, don't, I don't think I have a problem with that. I'll just hide somewhere. I'll just keep <laughs> gliding for the 10 minutes. <laughs> All that exciting gameplay. Yeah, yeah. That's like, if that's how that's you're gonna you do Twitch, <laughs> like like when you start your Twitch channel and it's just you hiding behind a tree somewhere, 
Oh, you're going to get Quality, so many viewers. So many viewers. 100 <laughs> viewers. <laughs> so can we expect you to come to I-64? Yeah, hopefully. If I'm invited, I'd love to come back. Um, it's super easy for me to get here. So, yeah, it's, it's just a really nice community. I love seeing all the guys and just kind of hanging out. So, yeah, just, it, I hope to be back. I hope so too. Well, it was really nice to meet you. Good luck with all your big changes that you're making on uh, Twitch and YouTube. And hopefully we'll see you at I-64. Yeah, hopefully. Nice to see you guys. Hey, he's doing hype. And... Right. Uh, sorry about the saturation there. I'm not sure what <laughs> happened there. Um, you guys just got a very good tan now. So. Yeah, man. Uh, but John, I'll fix that for the uh, YouTube video anyway. Um, <laughs> that's weird. Yeah, working on the tan, Jenna's on. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, call you someone else in a minute. Uh, Gio. I'm Geo. Geo. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Damn it. Um, how, how was Jenna's on? When, He's a horrible uh, guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> I actually really enjoyed speaking to him. Like, I really loved that. Um, you know, he's saying like he's been doing the yeah, X kind of content and he wants to move on to Y, which is like a really big step. But you know, when you understand how the, especially the world of YouTube over Twitch works, like that's a massively risky step, but like mad respect for the yeah. fact that he wants to like change it up. But he was just a really chill guy. Like I loved speaking to him because it was just so, he was so easy to talk to. Yeah. Um, like, you know, you never want to talk to someone who's difficult to speak to. And I just felt like we had like a really good flowing conversation and, and kind of got to know him pretty well. And I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, good. Yeah, because obviously John's about to take a massive risk. He's got a great Minecraft audience on uh, YouTube and he's now going to venture into some other it's stuff. A, it's, but, like, it's a big deal. I've seen people, I've yeah. seen content creators do stuff like that before. You, like, you've got to nail it yeah. for it to go right. And it works so well for the people for whom it works, you know. You've just got to make sure you're like yeah. doing it. But he definitely sounded like he knows exactly what he's doing. So, good luck, John. <laughs> We're rooting for you. Um, right, up next, we've got an interview with Luke Gaines, uh, also a, another YouTuber. So, yeah, it's quite spontaneous. Yeah, <laughs> let's get stuck into that. All right, so we're here with Luke, and you run a channel called Luke Games. So, what can you tell us about your channel? Uh, my channel is a child friendly channel that mainly runs with Minecraft, Terraria, and things like that. Um, it does have some other games on too, and uh, it's just a fun channel overall. Yeah, sounds pretty good. So, like, how did you get started? How did you get into that? Um, well, I started. I was get inspired by a lot of different people on YouTube, and I just really wanted to try it and do it. And uh, I was inspired by people like Stampy and things like that. And uh, yeah, it was it was really good getting into it. So, what was it about uh, wanting to make it child friendly that like drew drew you in? Like, instead of you know swearing and and doing what a lot of other people do. Well, it was more, um, when you're child friendly, you can be like family friendly and it's for everybody rather than just a specific audience. And while my videos do target um, a younger audience, it can be for the whole family. So it's sort of something that I aimed at people that just sit around as families and just watch the videos and enjoy them. That's pretty cool. So have you like met a lot of people at I-63 who watch your content? Uh, yeah, there's been a lot of families coming up, uh, their moms saying how they uh, really appreciate the work I do. Um, and what I do there, and it's really good to see that response. Yeah, like the smile on your face, you just like lit up when I said that. Like, that it's, so, it's so wholesome when you like it meet is. people who really appreciate what you do. It's really good, yeah. Um, but no, it, it's great, great experience coming to Insomnia, of course, because you get to meet so many different people um, and, and so many different families that, uh, that maybe not understand gaming, but uh, when they see you and they know uh, like who you are through videos and hear you in person, and they just chat generally with it, it's really cool. Really good. Yeah, you get the opportunity to meet a lot of people. Really so other than kind of like meeting people who watch your content, what other things have you been able to get up to at ICC3? Oh, playing a lot of the games, uh, a lot of games here. Uh, also buying lots of merch as well. I got loads back at um, <laughs> <laughs> back at the hotel, which I took back, and uh, yeah, things like that. It's good. I'm such a sucker for buying merch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So is this your first Insomnia? Uh, this is actually my first. The fourth Insomnia, I think. I went to Insomnia 57. Uh, that was my very first ever. Um, and then, sort of, that was when I was growing on YouTube. It got a bit bigger. Um, and then I come to Insomnia 60, 61, and now 63, which has been really, really good. Really fun. You're going to come to I64? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. it. I love it. Well, hopefully you'll get to meet like loads, loads like more people. And you know, have you got any like big plans coming up for your YouTube channel that you hope to do before you get here to I64? Well, one of my massive goals that I've got for this year and possibly by Insomnia 64 is to get 100,000 subscribers because at the minute I'm sitting on 82,000. Yeah. I'm trying to boost it up to that bit, you know, putting out videos and hopefully getting a bigger community. 
No, no, that sounds awesome. And like, I'm, I'm sure you'll like be able to do it. You know, you've got like these passionate audience who, who love what you do. So no, undoubtedly you'll get that. Definitely, yep. Should be good. Yeah, it sounds really fun. Well, hopefully we'll see you at I-64 Definitely. and that you've had a great I-63. It's sort of quietening down now, yeah. wrapping up as everyone's going home after a very intense oh, and tiring weekend. It's been a long weekend, it's a lot been, of walking around. <laughs> I to completely agree. Um, but yeah, no, thank you so much for coming and speaking to us and yep. hopefully you have a good rest of your Monday. Definitely. And, uh, and hopefully we'll see you at I-64. Definitely will. Thank you very much. Okay. So that was Keemster, I mean Luke Ames. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we met Luke uh, very briefly actually uh, whilst we were doing the interview with uh, John. Um, and this is one of the things with insomnia is all of a sudden you just start meeting new people yeah. just randomly. Um, it's like, by the way, this guy over here like does all this cool stuff. Like, let's go yeah, speak to him. Let's go speak to Everyone's him. Everyone's got something interesting yeah. about them. Story, right? yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I was just sitting in uh, Weatherspoons after one evening <laughs> after insomnia, just getting some food. A lot of people just sat next to me and started chatting. And How many girls did you pull? <laughs> funny. <laughs> um, and uh, started meeting new people. How many um, girls did you pull? Have a kiss and tell. <laughs> that, that's a better answer. Um, so yeah, it's always great for just meeting like loads of random people. Met, um, yeah, Twitch partner, just some weather spoons, chatting. And, uh, and, and Luke was such a nice guy as well. Yeah. yeah he was so like, Accommodating for the fact that we just kind of walked up to him, was like, "Hey, do you want to, you want to come talk to us? Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> come sit in front of the camera and smile." And he was so sweet. I don't know, like he's exactly the sort because you know his whole thing is he likes making family friendly content, which you know can't relate. I swear way too much. But uh, but like you could definitely tell he was sort of like he really cared about what he did. He was super passionate. Like the way he spoke to me about how he'd had families come up to him, like thanking him for the stuff he did. Like yeah. and, and he was so genuinely happy about it. And like he just seemed like such such a lovely guy that he's the exact sort of person you'd want doing that sort of thing. You know. Yeah, he's, I really liked him. I thought he was a nice guy. Yeah, so did I. I think he was great. Um, okay, let's get straight on to the next interview. The next guy, uh, he has very pink hair. <laughs> and he's very South African. Very South African. He's from Cape Town. It's Grant Hines. Hey, I'm here with Grant Hines. Am I? <laughs> Am I? So you're a YouTuber from South Africa. Am I? Tell us a bit about what you do. So I am a YouTuber from South Africa. Um, I uh, have a YouTube channel as my predominant thing, and I also live stream to Twitch, which I love. Uh, I love live streaming a lot. So I uh, used to be a TV presenter, focusing on uh, video games and technology, and uh, I kind of moved on to digital because that's a natural move. We're in the future, right? Yeah, we're in the we're in, we're in the future. <laughs> 2029 is actually happening now. We don't know. It's pretty exciting. So, what like kind of like plans have you got for all this stuff? Um, well, again, I, I really like Twitch. I really want to grow my Twitch channel and make that more uh, mainstay, make it more lucrative, so that I can uh, kind of let the the wheels of YouTube kind of roll on their own. I love making YouTube videos, um, but it's time I think for me to take on a really good a new challenge. Uh, yeah. And Twitch is a really nice challenge, especially coming from live TV, because it's it's yeah. it's a way that I can really like interact right with my audience in a way that I couldn't do on television. Yeah. But also like have that kind of performance uh, value that live TV y provides. Yeah, definitely. No, no, I totally agree. So I mean, like it totally makes sense now why you'd be at insomnia. But like, is this your first one? Um, no, this is actually my second insomnia. I uh, I went to in I sixty two. Okay. And uh, it was a, a load of fun. Uh, I just love the community here, um, and they they invited me back. A miracle, dude! Nice. How's it been for you? Um, it's been it's been good. Um, I'm very tired. My voice has gone hoarse. Uh, had some really uh, great experiences. Was on stage with uh, Xavier uh, from the WWE. What a, a genuine guy! <laughs> like, and everybody says that about like celebrities that they meet, but uh, honestly, I mean it. Like, I think he's uh, a good soul. <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, it, I got to do that. Uh, I haven't yet got to play some of the games yet. Yeah, yet there's a lot. There's a lot to do. Um, played uh, some uh, flight ball against you guys. Yeah, we won, by the way. Yes, you guys won. And you ran away. I needed to pee. <laughs> no, needed to do loser. A number one. Let's be honest here. I'm very, I'm very proud of you guys. <laughs> what you did was insane. So yeah, yeah, it was cool. It was a lot of fun. I want to see more of that. 
Yeah, I mean, you also uh, attempted a Guinness World Record, right? Tell us a bit oh, about yes. that. So I attempted uh, one on stage with Xavier Woods. We had to build like a, a three-story one by one in Fortnite. And uh, it was uh, very embarrassing because I had to do it on a console and I don't play console, so. Oh, that's the only reason it didn't go well. The, on the only reason. <laughs> So going back to uh, your YouTube career a little bit, so can you, can you maybe tell us about like how you kind of got started on that? Because obviously YouTube's such a big thing these days. So many people want to get into these these worlds. Yeah, so I used to storyboard for a cartoon show back in South Africa. Uh, and that was my first real career. And I was just really fortunate because the cartoon show was in a television studio that was, um, uh, that had a whole bunch of other TV shows in it. And a yeah. producer came running to me panicked one day and was like, I have a game for you to review. The person we had scheduled bailed. Oh. Please help. Uh, and I was like, I've never been on TV before. I didn't have an Xbox 360. Uh, like I, but I, I said yes for some reason. Um, and uh, I did it. And they were like, that's amazing. Could you uh, do this next week? And that was, the, that was how it started on te television. So I've been doing TV for about 10 years. And then I was like really excited to do online video. Yeah. I met a South African YouTuber called Casper Lee. He taught me a lot about YouTube uh, and I helped him with his channel. And here I am doing my own thing now. Yeah, like pretty exciting. So I hear you guys are looking for having four night servers in South Africa. Yes, uh, that, that's something that's very close to my heart. Um, a lot of games, especially multiplayer games that have to do well in Africa need localized servers. You guys use EU and yeah. um, and the North American servers, but the latency between the between the two is way too much uh, for any of us to actually be competitive in any way. Whether it's Fortnite, Overwatch, Siege, uh, all of these games require uh, like a really good ping. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. If you want to be competitive in any way, so um, Epic is the one uh, company that hasn't as far as I know, express any interest in Fortnite servers, and it's really hindering the growth of Fortnite in Africa. So if they can lead the way and build a Fortnite uh, server based somewhere in Africa, yeah. so that everybody in Africa can have a very low latency, it puts Africa on the map as a, as a strong contender. It's not that we don't have good players, we just yeah. have bad infrastructure. Yeah. And the infrastructure is put up uh, all around the world, except for Africa, and I think we kind of forgotten uh, by a lot of developers. So, hashtag yeah. Fortnite Africa. <laughs> We're gonna get that going. So, yeah. I've actually, you're not actually the first person I've heard of about this where they want like dedicated African servers because you'd have to play on EU or even to try and kind of reach NA if, if you're really uh, oh, no, ambitious. It's, no point. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's better to hit South America from us than it is to hit NA. And in fact, yeah. I think they're building a pipe from South America to Africa. So, that oh. ping is probably gonna improve. So we might play that's there. Something. It's something, but we actually need our own. And there yeah. are enough players. We've got an entire continent that's just yeah. got nothing. <laughs> yeah. So we need we need some uh, some attention, guys. <laughs> I mean, like the way you've kind of spoken about it to me is that there's like this this buzzing like community ready to grow in esports in South Africa, and it's just it's got to be unleashed, you know? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. We we've got like a ton of competitive teams. We've got our own leagues. They got they got good money uh, behind them, but. Uh, when it comes to us being competitive in any capacity abroad, we don't do very well. We've got one team, Bravado, they're doing pretty well. But Energy Esports is an incredible team as well. Yeah. Uh, Quasi Esports is great. They just need to, st you're only as good as the people you play against. And if you've got like a, a pool of players that are a, a certain skill level, you're only going to compete at that skill level. Yeah. You need to break of out course, and, and, and hit, hit other European and, and uh, American markets. Yeah. I mean, so like, I'm. Here's to, to unleashing the talent and competitive players of South Africa. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Let's do it. So, one last thing. Yesterday, we had the KSI versus Logan Paul boxing match. What do you think? Well, <laughs> I, I love the fight. Uh -huh. I think Deji did very well. I think Deji's actually the hero of the whole thing. Okay. Um, MVP, Deji? Deji's the MVP. <laughs> I think um, it's disappointing it ended in a draw but not unusual, I don't think it's fixed. Um, I think everyone played very well. Uh, I think Logan really came to the party. I, I wasn't expecting Logan to do as well as he did. Okay. And it's because JJ's had all the experience up until now. He's played against Joella, he's played like in huge arenas. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, and he's been, oh, 
and he's been training longer. So like that, those things put together make that uh, make him like the likely to win. And I think Logan really like over trained himself to that point. So I'm really impressed with what they brought. I'm really excited to see what they do next. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. We need to follow up now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Did you want to volunteer? No. <laughs> we can fight, but you'll beat me. <laughs> me? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I Try. will see. That was some like top tier Olympic analysis. But thank you so much for joining us here at I63. Hopefully, they'll invite you back for I64 as your That'd third be one. Incredible. That would be so cool. We're going to hang out some more, and uh, hopefully, at that point, you'll actually have this whole uh, Fortnite Africa stuff going on. Can you imagine we can be talking about that. You'll be coming back here. here. You'll be coming back here and you'll be like, I'm a pro now. I'm too good for you. Yeah. <laughs> now we have our stuff. We'll get Harry. We'll play some Overwatch. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll Twitter him. Oh, yeah? Sure. <laughs> You're dark, dark. <laughs> no, I have faith. I have faith. But, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a really fantastic week. I mean, we've still got one day left. Um, so, yeah, let's have a great rest of I63 and we'll see you at I64. Thank you so much for having me and subscribe to Caffeine Gaming. Hell yeah! <laughs> so, uh, Dan, uh, Gio's very insulted by that comment, by the way. Look, I'm sorry my face isn't good enough for you. <laughs> but my face is back. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, near, near the end of that, mentioned the KSI Logan Paul fight. So that was happening while we were at Insomnia and actually me and Grant and a few others, we were in the same room watching that fight. And I think the reaction was... Um, well, I just said we're going to... We haven't really discussed it between the three of us. So I want to hear what everyone thinks and we can have a, our own little KSI Logan Paul fight behind us, depending on what everyone yeah. says. So what do you reckon? So, well, f first of all, Dan, you've said that it was rigged, staged. Um, you mentioned the, the six rounds and, you know, being an even number so it can be a draw. I personally think that it w was a draw and, like, not rigged. Um, I know that one of the judges actually put KSI ahead by one point. So if you add a whole of points, KSI should have won. But I think uh, it was a very even match. Um, obviously, the first two rounds went to Logan. Um, I now can't remember the rest of the rounds. But um, yeah, KSI was just basically just staying with it, making sure Logan just kind of like tired and then just threw in some jabs. And what do you think, Gio? Right, literally couldn't care less yeah <laughs> the only reason i even saw it was because i was sat next to my boyfriend who was watching it on someone's pc yeah. otherwise i would not have seen it i literally could not care less like well, i would rather use my energy on no i like more. people they worked hard for like, the boxing match so i can recognize and respect my that eye, and from what i like i don't know anything about boxing and i i really really don't care about logan paul or ksi uh, but from what I gathered, I thought that KSI should have won. But also, well, like, I haven't lost any sleep over it. <laughs> so, <you're, laughs> Logan, Paul, Logan Paul definitely won the early two fight, uh, two yeah. rounds. Uh, and as the fight progressed, KSI definitely came in. You could see Logan Paul was tanking and very tired. Yeah. And at the end of the fight, I was talking to my friends and I was like, I don't know who's going to win this one. I was like, yeah, I haven't got a clue. That's such a, yeah. That was such an even fight. So when they said the draw, I was like... Yeah, I understand why they gave that. Yeah, it was a majority draw, so obviously the one, like, yeah, the one ref exactly. gave it. Yeah, two, um, two refs gave the draw and one uh, put yeah, KSI. One but ahead. I'm very impressed with KSI's reaction because obviously he was, the first two rounds he took some big hits and then he come back and he really, yeah. he was a warrior, like respect to him as well. Tank, uh, Logan Paul, very good at the beginning, shows off his athleticism, but got very tired. <laughs> Wait for the sirens to go back. London. Yeah, the thing yeah, I found London. funny is, you watched it in a hotel, right, with a load of people? There yeah. There was like a party yeah. going on? Part, you yeah, were at home. Yeah, I was at home, yeah. I watched it in the BYOC hall where there was see like 2,000 people. So anytime something happened, you just had this wave of, oh, because <laughs> everyone had stopped playing video games to watch this one match. That's so there was a lot of noise, and I just kind of, I gathered what I should be thinking yeah. from that. Yeah, they should have put it on the Arena Clash stage, shouldn't they? That's what I thought <laughs> they'd do. That amazing. Yeah, I thought they'd have done yeah. a big thing for it. It is quite a big, big, big deal. Yeah, uh, but yeah, Logan's reach was just like far superior to KSI's. And yeah, I think KSI did really well just to like, yeah, 100%. hang in there. But, Respect um, to them both and to the other two boys as well. The, the yeah, brothers. So, uh, so I'd like to point out that Genazon has said that you should fight I-64. Yeah, I saw that. I'm ignoring that. <laughs> <laughs> who's who's going to fight at I-64? <laughs> Will and Genazon. Well, I was gonna. Oh, oh yeah. I was gonna mention like when we show the drone football stuff at the end. I think this should be the equivalent to the boxing. Is you, you know different YouTubers fighting over uh -huh. with drone football because <laughs> uh -huh. I think that's a much much uh -huh. better, much more entertaining. Um, 
Not as much money in it though, but. Um. <laughs> um, anyway, let's go back to Grant. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, we yeah we met him for the first time. Yes. What do you think of him? We became such good friends. Like by the end of uh, by the end of Insomnia, we were such good good buddies. Like we got on with him so well. He's so much energy, so much fun. You know, at the pub quiz. Very drunk. Oh yes. <laughs> but he's, he's just hey, such well, a lot of fun. What goes to hang on the pub quiz stays in the pub quiz. I think. Yeah, man. Yeah. If you ever Including come to Insomnia, you hitting me in the face with a paper. I said what goes on in pub quiz stays. <laughs> she doesn't get it. I'm just pointing it out. But if you go to uh, Insomnia, guys, make sure you get a ticket to the pub quiz because that is something special. That it, it's not a pub quiz. I don't um, know what it is, but it's it, not. It's, <laughs> yeah. Well, but I, I really liked Grant. You know, we all became really good friends with him by by the end of Insomnia, and uh, he's just such a lot of fun. Yeah. Very nice guy. I only met him for a little while, obviously, yeah. I weren't there all the days. Uh, very, very lively, very friendly, yeah. uh, hard worker as well, so yeah, big respect definitely. to him as well. He Best was so much fun to interview because he, like, he just fully, like, played the camera, just like, you know, how, yeah. how you should. Like, well, his background's on TV, so he's used to... Yeah, exactly. Like, I think he, I might, exactly. I might give him the details to my barber, though. <laughs> You're not a fan of the pink hair? Uh, nay. I was not a big fan of the pink I hair. I can't imagine him with different hair, though. Yeah. I mean, he just had a haircut as well and had it already done, so normally it's a bit longer, so... It's like, it's like it's I, pink, I meet people and, and, and new people can't imagine me not being blonde, even though I'm obviously not natural blonde. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert, guys. <laughs> but, no, I, like... I thought he was wearing a wig. Shut up. <laughs> I will um, shave off your beard in the night. <laughs> Well, in the night, why not after this? Because you'll be asleep at night. Well, just do it now, live on camera. Oh, you know what I mean? Bring out my shaver. <laughs> is, this, is this a challenge? <laughs> Sorry, we'll go, we'll go get one from the hardware store. We'll, I don't know, get a What do I get? <laughs> Nothing, just fame. Nah, nah. no dice, no Fame dice. for being clean shaven. That's nah. like the least effort. I'd rather be alone and bearded like in Castaway. <laughs> Thanks, Harry, for the follow. Harry's watching. Oh, is he here? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, right, let's get on to the next video, which is... So one thing that we do at Cavern Gaming is we actually speak to a lot of indie developers, do a lot of interviews, a lot of our uh, content on our site uh, from our contributors are all about indie games. Uh, one of the big zones or areas of Insomnia is the indie zone, and it's a great place to go find some new, different games. Um, we love spending time there, and uh, Ahmed, well, I'll let you introduce this. Yeah, so there is loads of indie games. And I didn't want to spend so much time talking to the talking to talking to the developers of games that I wasn't wouldn't really be my kind of taste. But there was one game in particular that I see that really caught my eye. and It was called Hellwarders, and it's a tower defense action hack and slash game where you where you play as you can choose from three different characters. There's, the thing I like about it, I like retro games, PS2, back to work kind of stuff, <laughs> and it takes all the best elements from. Like Golden Axe, where you've got the three characters that can do different things uh, from games like Devil May Cry, Castlevania, an old game, a niche game called uh, Chaos Legion as well, which people might, may or may not know of, but all the kind of best elements of the old games and bring it in with like kind of modern graphics. It's made by uh, a team of South Koreans, so they weren't there unfortunately, so I didn't get a chance to talk directly to the developers, but I talked to one of the guys representing them that was from their publisher and he had all the information we need, so uh, yeah, we had an interview with him. He'll give you all the, all the information that you want to hear. Cool, so without further ado, uh, this is the interview. So I'm here with Daniel Stubbs, and he is part of the publishing team for the game Hellwarders, which is coming out on pretty much all the platforms. Can you tell us a bit about the game? Yeah, so basically, uh, Hellwarders is a tower defense game where you play as a hero character that you have to find, uh, like defend against hordes of demons that are coming from uh, the underworld, basically. So yeah, there's three playable characters. Uh, so there's a knight, uh, there's a gunman and uh, someone called Samson who places bombs and just you got to basically build your tower defense to just strategically place and defend against the Nexus. So yeah. Well, if, if you can compare Hellwarders to another game, what other game is it comparable to? I mean, I, I've, I've played it already, so you can agree with me or disagree with me. Okay, I love my games. So I compared it a bit to the art design, very much Dark Souls. Very much so, yeah, definitely. I agree with you on that one bit of Castlevania, like the 3D in there? Slightly, yeah. I would say so the gameplay itself is something more like Orcs Must Die, if you've ever played that. So again, another tower defense game. Um, but yeah, with the Dark Souls kind of element or environment and art style to it, really. One little bit of a technical uh, point is it's not like a one-stick does-all in terms of the movement. 
So it's more like strafing around and you look around in the uh, right mouse. So it plays a bit different, but still very uh, simple and easy to get uh, easy to get to grips with. Very intuitive, very enjoyable. Uh, tell us a bit about the actual team that made it. How big are they? Where they're based? So yeah, they're based in Hong Kong. Um, it's Anti Gravity Game Studios. They're called, um, and the team size is only six of them. So um, they've been doing a great job. Really fun guys to work with as well. And um, yeah, they've uh, you know developed a great IP. It's such a good game. And is this their first game? Yeah, so this is the first game that they're doing and this is the first game that we're actually publishing with them. So we're going to be publishing in the whole of the EU and also in um, America as well. Um, it's coming across all platforms as well and it's going to be a worldwide release with it as well. So once it's released, it's going to be on all platforms for everyone to play. Okay, tell me a bit more about the uh, publisher then, about you guys. Okay, so uh, we're PP Cube. Uh, basically, we have a lot of our games here. So if you are down in Insomnia, come and play. Um, we're based in Bristol. Um, I work as one of the production side of it all. Um, and uh, yeah, we do games such as Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, which is one of our new fighting games. We do Cat Quest, All Star Fruit Racing. Uh, we've also got Valtteria in our coming as well. We've got quite a few games, so you can check us out on pq.co.uk. So very, very busy. Uh, so tell me about what we can expect from this game in terms of release dates, in terms of price tag maybe. What, the, more info, the more info, the better. Um, so we're looking to probably release it at some time uh, late this year, probably around the October, maybe November mark, uh, depending on if we can actually hit the times and dates. Uh, price mark, we haven't actually got a fully uh, confirmed price yet, but um, just keep on checking out on a PQ website and keep checking on Steam. It is on early access on Steam, so if you want to get your hands involved, by all means, go check it out. You don't know anything about microtransactions, season pass, DLC, all that shenanigans? There's no DLC or any microtransaction. It is a premium game, so you purchase it, that's it. Good, good. Fantastic. Um, that kind of stuff can scare a lot of people away, so it's nice. You buy the game, you get the game. Yeah, it's a premium product. You buy that You buy that game, you get that game. Fantastic. Uh, one final thing as well. Uh, what do you reckon this company might make next? I mean, any words so far, or is it all kept quite hush-hush and just very focused on what the current product? I think, I think right now they are focusing on the current product, and I think they're doing such a good job of it. I mean, it's a really nice polished game, and when it comes out on release, I think it'll do very well for them to carry on moving on to their next IP. But no, you know, nothing you can tell us? Nothing that I can tell you, I'm afraid. Yeah. But there is something. Potentially. <laughs> Who knows? There's something. <laughs> We'll find out eventually. Uh, be sure to keep checking out uh, Hell Warders and the progress, and uh, hopefully you guys will get a chance to play it either here or maybe at your home. It's a fantastic game. I'm definitely worth checking out. Thank you very much for talking to me. Sorry, that was... Uh, what was it called again? It's called, uh, Hell, Hell it's called Hell Warders. Hell Warders. Hell Warders. My bad. I just had a... It's on the screen as well. Complete mind blank. Yeah. So, anyway, just, a, just a quote. Wait for siren. Time. Stop dying! <laughs> God! It's an ambulance. They were both ambulances that gone past. Um, yeah, so no, I was talking to Gio. Gio said she's not very interested in indie games, but it doesn't it doesn't play like an indie game. It plays like a classic, like classic PS2 game. So I liked it. It wasn't over the top with DLC and pass and all that riffraff. Very cool. Plays well. There is no uh, ray trace light and there's no over the top graphics. It's just very humble. So that's why I liked it. It played solid. So. Worth yeah. checking out, be on Steam soon. Yes, and uh, yeah, I mean, there are just tons of indie games. Um, yeah, and the other ones were good. But yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, the, these aren't like people just randomly making games. They're, these are like proper professional. They're there developers. too, though. <laughs> There's the odd one, but like. No, no, the, the, the they are very, very good really games. Really they are very, very good games. Um, so, up next is we chatted to uh, Nikita, who is a presenter for ELC Gaming and Rocket League. Uh, Rocket League had uh, one of their tournaments at I-63. They had a massive Americans kind of start. It was track. like an 18-wheeler yeah. that they like, had to build a stage into. Yeah, it just kind of all comes out and they're, they're the game. It gamers. was cool. Yeah, it was awesome. Like, and all then the balcony about, on the top, which yeah. is actually where we did our interview. Yeah, uh, it's all sponsored by uh, Mountain Dew, so there's lots of Mountain Dew. I'm now hooked on that stuff. Right? <laughs> um, yeah. We pretty much did our interviews where we did because you were in close proximity to the free Mountain Dew. <laughs> yes, the crates of Mountain Dew are right next to where we're doing the interview. So, um, anyway, let's get uh, straight into the interview. So I'm here with Nikita, so can you tell us about what you've been doing here at i63? Yeah, um, I work with ELC Gaming and we're the company that has been producing the Mountain Dew Game Fuel League and it's uh, culminated in the grand final live at Insomnia 63. 
Yeah, so this is all Rocket League stuff, right? Which is a game that I personally don't know loads about. So can you tell us a bit how the, about how the league works? Yeah, I mean, Rocket League is essentially uh, football with cars. Um, it's a 3v3 competitive game where each player controls a car that can also have a boost, go in the air and so on. It's a lot of fun, even when you are starting out, but it has a really high skill gap. So there's a lot, you know, there's a, a real skill scene that you can kind of climb up to, which is great fun. Do you personally play a lot of it? Um, I play a little bit of it, not loads. There's other games that I might, but I really enjoy hosting it and I love like gamers and so on. So I do a lot of the interviews and hosting and stuff around that. So yeah, as we say, you're presenting it. So can you tell us a bit about like how you kind of got into that? Because it's a pretty interesting career path. Yeah, um, so I've been following esports since about 2003. I started with like Halo 2, MLG. I've loved it. I followed it all the way uh, to forwards. And eventually kind of what happened is that I quit my corporate job. It was like, that's it, I'm going for esports. Um, it was tough and anyone out there watching, it is tough. You have to really uh, put yourself out there a lot. But eventually if you're good and you work hard, you will find a place and that's what happened. A bit of luck, hard work and kind of belief. Um, I got the shot with the LC to do a hosting um, and then actually at the event, I love League of Legends and their cast had dropped out so they had a solo cast and I said look, I can talk a bit about League of Legends and they brought me on, then they brought me back for Counter-Strike and then I joined the company. I mean, that's awesome. So, of all the games that you haven't worked on, which do you think you would like to work on the most? Oh, okay, like current or any? Any, well, yeah, go for both. Okay, so any, I think I have to go back to Halo 3 because that was like the game that I used to watch and I remember, I have such fond memories that I would love to have been like kind of there at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, current, I think there's so many really cool games that are happening. Um, I think Fortnite, Fortnite would be cool. Like it's like, there's a lot of them I love, but Battlegrounds, there's loads of them, but I just think that everything that's happening with Fortnite and it's it's different to more traditional esports in the way that the competition is being run. And I think that's super interesting. And, that's, and the way that you have to cast it in the same way that Casting League of Legends is very different to Overwatch. Casting Fortnite, very different to those games, and I'd love that challenge. Yeah, they all come with their own like kind of unique sort of attributes, you yeah. know. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, beyond what you've been doing here on Rocket League, have you had a chance to look at anything else? I sixty three. Yeah, I've been walking around. I think Razer have a really cool booth. Um, obviously, Spider Man on the PlayStation. Super excited about that. We're getting that on release. That's kind of the two things. But just the crowd, the people, some of the cosplay has been insane. So. Oh, yeah. So what's been your absolute favorite thing, total highlight about being here? I mean, the truck and it going really well because I am working, so uh, <laughs> Klein's happy, so I'm happy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, it, it looks pretty insane. So, but yeah, thank you so much for speaking to us and uh, I, I'm sure you're gonna have like a great rest of your I-63 and, uh, and uh, we'll see you in I-64, hopefully. Great, thanks a lot. So, up next is, uh, I'm going to talk about BYOC. Yeah. Uh, so I'll leave that to Gio. BYOB. Make up! It's a reference know, You know this song, right? No. Oh no, that's the wrong song, that was Chop City. Gio. So, <laughs> BYOC is pretty much where I spend like most of my free time while we were at Insomnia because I just... <laughs> <laughs> I have so yeah. many friends. <laughs> yeah, ridiculous. No, I like I, I I knew a big like uh, there were a lot of Overwatch teams there who were scrimming, they were competing and stuff, and a lot of people who I knew or knew of, and so I was kind of part of that circle. And um, so I spent loads of time there. There were loads of like friends of mine who were doing really awesome things there, and I just really loved the vibe. Like I think I, I said this earlier. Like I love the vibe of BYOC, where it's just it always feels like one big party where everyone's just yeah. hanging out, everyone's just friends. Um, so we actually spoke to quite a few people there. Um, we spoke to uh, Blank, who's a caster, um, who actually we spoke to him in like the little casting booth. So we weren't amongst the peasants. Yeah. We, were, <laughs> we were up in a, in a booth then, but um, you know we spoke to uh, Jealous, who's on the Overwatch UK World Cup team. Yeah. We spoke to Emmy, who's a like major part of the um, community. We spoke to uh, a guy who was there in a group of 17 and they're all Twitch partners and they they came there because, well, because they love the vibe as well, but like as part of like a, a big sort of streaming thing. So we spoke to a load of people who were who were there and uh, it was actually, like, it was pretty fun. It was really interesting. Like I love hearing about like everyone's different reasons for being there. 
Yeah, so, um, yeah, let's get on with the interview. So, we, yeah, like Gio said, we chatted to a variety of different people there. So, uh, let's see what they had to say. So, we're here in the BYOC area where we have over 1,500 gamers who bring their own rigs. You can rent one. And they're here in the biggest land in the UK. It's basically one big four-day party, 24 hours of gaming. It's pretty cool. So, we're going to go talk to some people. So we're here with Flank. He's been casting the PUBG tournament, which is being run by Belong and Steel Series. Can you tell us how that's been going? I can. Yeah, it's been it's been absolutely phenomenal, actually. Um, there's like so many people that came over. We weren't expecting to begin with. The queues was just huge after the first game. I think the 10 o'clock one on I think it was Friday, a little bit slow, and then after that we just had floods and floods of players in. Been loving it. I think we got one of the tickets to front page on Reddit as well. It was it was the second one down of about about 8,000 points. So. <laughs> We like. I think the guys would like to say that's intentional. The tickets were maybe so cool, but you know, it's one of those ideas. Um, but yeah, it's been amazing. People have been absolutely loving it. Yeah, this is your first time casting PUBG, right? So how's how's that kind of treading into new waters? Uh, yeah. So I, I'm I'm an Overwatch caster, so typically I'm I'm loud, loud, loud. Um, PUBG is a lot more slower, but I think I'm quite conversational. So I do it with John. He's my co-caster from Overwatch as well as, and I've just kind of flowed into it really, really well. So things have been really, really fun for me. Um, and I think, like I was saying, I've had like a few laughs from the crowd and stuff. They've been loving it. Uh, and the crowd just gets really big because they're also queuing for the match, so they wait in between. So I have a nice audience to talk to. It's brilliant. Yeah, that sounds great. So so what kind of things are you going to be getting up to after Insomnia? So presumably you've got more casting coming up. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. So I, I don't think you can tell, but I've lost my voice a little bit. <laughs> uh, shouting all day, every day. Because um, I did Arena Clash uh, in the mornings. Uh, so I've got PUBG, and then in the evenings I do UKM as well. So I've got three events going on at Insomnia, so I'm casting literally all the time. Um, but after Insomnia, open to do some more Arena Clash when the next season comes up, open division, all this kind of stuff, and potentially some more PUBG, should the opportunities arise. Because I've kind of fallen into this one, but it's been great fun. I'd love to do some more. So you're relatively new to casting. Can yeah. you tell us like how you got into it? Right, so this is a good story because <laughs> I volunteered at the eSports uh, volunteering team at I-61 last year in August. Yeah. Um, and my girlfriend, who is instantly laid over there on the couch, um, <laughs> she said, why don't you just catch one of these matches that I was admitting? So I did. I really enjoyed it. And then there was like three months of downtime in between where I would not really found anything. In January, February was where I started doing it proper. Came back into it a lot. And now I'm here at I-63. The full cyclical circle has been completed and I'm casting here like for reals. That's awesome. So other than all the PUBG stuff, what stuff have you been really loving at I-63 this year? Oh my God, there is so much going on. The the Fortnite stuff that the PS4 guys are doing, they, they are so loud, so enjoyable. And then you've got the Razor on the other side. They're all trying to really get into it. So it's like a little bit of a competition between those two guys all the time. So they're both always loud, both really, really fun. So some good stalls. But BYOC, that's where it's at, really. Like I love meeting people. I love meeting the players. I've been mostly over by the stall, over by the stage over there, having a drink, talking to players, you know, meeting people I've never seen before. Like day over here, I've been speaking in front of ages, years on, uh, I think that's your, right hand side um i've been for ages online and then like finally i see three finally get to meet him it's pretty cool it's been a pretty awesome few days but we wish you the best of luck you've been doing really great we've been catching some of your casting and i uh, hope you have a good rest of your i63 cheers thank you very much i'll see you later gm okay so we're here with ren and so you're a twitch partner yes. how many times have you been to wow. byoc this is my fourth, fourth or fifth i think oh wow okay um, do you stream from here? Um, yes, well, I actually did one the other day. It's, it's harder because obviously you've got a lot of other people, but it's still good fun. Incredible, yeah. incredible fun. So what's your favourite thing about BYOC? The fact that you get to be in BYOC. You've got you've got the convention centre, yes, don't get wrong, that's fantastic, but this makes... Well, it's Insomnia. Insomnia used to be a LAN event. Yes. And it still is progressed into what it is now, but yeah, BYOC, you get to be with gamers, you get, get to be with your friends, have general fun. That's it. Yeah, because you're here with a group of, what, 17? So do you just all see this basically like one big party? Yeah, basically. Because a lot of us are from other parts of the country. So I've got, um, we're down south, we've got a load of friends that are up north. So this is a nice communal area just to come join up, sit, get drunk, play games, do whatever you want, really. It's, it's nice. It's yeah, really nice. I absolutely love it. So, I mean, I, I've never personally brought my own computer anywhere. Like, do you, you find to... that hard? No. So no. easy. Um, I've got a tiny little PC, so just whack it in the car, bring it with you, done. Or <laughs> you can rent PCs from here as well, and they're actually really, really, really good. And they're yeah. cheap as well, actually. Yeah, because yeah, some of the PCs that you see around here are pretty impressive. Like the one that you're standing in front of is pretty... Yeah, this is actually um, another Twitch partner. This is my, my friends. And uh, 
yeah, he's only he's only just built this for insomnia actually. <laughs> Oh my god, that is dedication. So, okay, if you had to convince to someone to come to uh, I-64 just for the BYOC in three words, what would they be? Fun, fun, fun. Creative, I love it. <laughs> it it's just fun. That is it. Can't, can't go wrong. If you want to come to a convention, you want to have fun, you come to BYOC. Be with a load of load of geeks, a load of nerds and a load of gamers. <laughs> I love it. Well, hopefully we'll see you at I-64 and uh, hopefully you enjoy the rest of your I-63. Thanks Thank for talking well. to Thank us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we're here with Jealous. You're a competitive Overwatch player. Is this your first BYOC? Uh, it is, yeah, actually. In, uh, in a while anyway. So. In a while? In a while. Yeah, <laughs> very long time. How are you finding it? Uh, it's been fun. I've been really enjoying it so far. I've been uh, focusing on practicing with my team, screaming a lot and uh, just getting the wins, you know? Yeah, so this year you actually made it onto the UK Overwatch World Cup team. So how's that going? Uh, it's been really enjoyable so far, working with a lot of the really top players that the UK has to offer, and also screaming against you know other national teams. That's been interesting as well. Yeah, how did you actually like you know make the journey onto that? Um, so originally I approached the community lead, I think, which was Chipsa, and then he offered me a tryout, which I was like really fortunate and grateful for. And I just managed to, you know, make it through the process that everyone else was going through. And it was really lucky, to be honest. I'm, I'm really, I have a lot to thank him for. So what's the ultimate goal then with competitive Overwatch? Are you hoping to reach for the Overwatch League? Someday, one day. It might be a while, but we're all working towards it, I think. That's everyone's main goal. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully you'll get that. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. So other than the BYOC and all the scrimming and stuff you've been doing, what's been your favorite thing about I-63 so far? Hmm. Um... Probably just hanging out with everyone, to be honest, getting to meet a lot of people, a lot of community members. It's been really interesting. It's good fun. Sounds pretty good. So definitely coming to I-64? Of course, of course. <laughs> Always. Well, hopefully we'll see you there. And yeah. thank you so much for speaking to us. And good luck with all your scrimming and then the World Cup. And we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Thanks for the interview. So I'm here with Emmy. She's kind of, you're pretty well known around the UK Overwatch community, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess. I guess. <laughs> so is this your first Insomnia? Um, oh, this is, I think this is my 10th, my 10th Insomnia. Um, but like, I started off in the league scene, and then once, since Overwatch came out in 58, uh, that's when I, I started doing Overwatch. Like, I picked up as soon as, you know, Overwatch, we love Overwatch, so. <laughs> so do you always come to the BYOC then? Always, always. Or, like, I've been asked to admin several times, and I kind of take on, like, I kind of do bits and things around the place, but, um, I always pay. I like having the PC there. Mm. You can't you can't come without being able to chill. You know, you have the option to and it's really, really nice. So Yeah, always. so what's your like favorite thing about the BYOC then? Oh <laughs> hard question. Honestly it's just having people around you. Like being able to chill. And especially um, at this one, we've ha we have basically three teams sat together. So it's really, really nice to have them be able to, you don't have to walk across the whole hall mm. to, to get to everyone. And I just love the connections, like the, the spending time together. Yeah, yeah. I know, I completely agree. I'm super social, so <laughs> I, I love all that sort of thing. So other than the BYOC stuff, what's been your favorite thing about Insomnia so far this year? I haven't really spent that much time out of the BYOC area, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, <laughs> My favorite thing about Insomnia is the video games. I don't even play video games. <laughs> I'm so, um, Ma um, because Mouse has brought a PC, but his PC is kind of, like my PC is so much better. Like my PC is top <laughs> high end. Um, so he's he's just been using my PC. I've been walking around just doing some random stuff. I've not been on my PC at all. <laughs> so as a kind of community person, you're going to the Paris group stage of the Overwatch World Cup. Are you excited to see Team UK play? Really excited. Like it's going to be such a good team because. Um, Last year we uh, did really well until, until <laughs> the event, <laughs> until somebody stopped playing the game, didn't pick up Mercy. We uh, we didn't, you know. But like overall, it was a strong team. So like I'm really looking forward to, because because you can only build from that with with the roster that we have now. Yeah. I'm really excited. They're gonna do so well. Are they gonna go to BlizzCon? Yes. Yeah. They're gonna come first in their groups. Second will be France or Germany. I really. I love uh, Crusade, maybe Netherlands, <laughs> but um, France and Germany, I think, look strong. So um, I think that's a general consensus anyway. Like, loads of people think so. 
I'm, I'm pretty excited. It's going to be pretty good. So, yeah, I mean, thanks for speaking to us, and I'm sure we'll see you at I-64 hanging around the BYOC because you don't do anything else in summer. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, it's very strange. I, I'm always running around the place doing stuff for people, looking after players. Sometimes I get them drinks when they're too... Because they have to wake up so early to play. So they don't have time to like eat. And it's a hard life. Yeah. So you, ju you just help them. You help help wherever you can. You know. Basically, BYOC mom. So <laughs> well, thanks so much for talking to us, and I'll I'll let you go and and help the players and get them food and stuff, and hopefully play some stuff for yourself and have a little bit of a relax. So I'm sure we'll see you at I64, and I personally will see you at the Paris group stage. So yeah, thank you so much, and we'll see you soon. Thanks. So we're here with Rook, and you're actually here to play in one of the Overwatch tournaments, right? Yeah, no, I'm here to uh, play in the UKM tournament uh, for Overwatch for British Harry Kane. <laughs> I love the team name. <laughs> so is this your first time playing in a tournament? I've played in a couple of smaller online tournaments, but it's my first time coming to LAN to actually play a tournament. I've been to Insomnia itself a couple of times, but I'm really enjoying actually taking part being in a tournament, having all my mates right next to me, and actually getting to like shout with them, basically. So, I mean, you do a lot of casting. You're about to cast the Overwatch Open Division Season 3. So how does it feel to kind of be on the other side and, and be not commentating, but actually being the one being commentated? It's really fun. I I play, obviously played a little bit before, and that's what actually got me into casting Overwatch. Um, and it's something I really missed because I did put in a lot of hours, obviously, to do casting stuff. And it's nice to just sit down and actually be on the other end, get decent again, have some really nutty plays, and just be around because there's so many people who come over and be really excited about everything you're doing. Like teams come over and shake hands afterwards. Uh, got people from all different teams, like Eminem, uh, from Zach Frost's team, and from uh, Whiff Gaming, and people like that. And they're just coming around. Everyone's getting really excited, and it's just so much fun. Basically. It's so wholesome, basically. I, and, you know, <laughs> it's, I really love it. It's really good. So, going into the casting stuff, how did you actually get into that? So I was taking part in a small Overwatch tournament called Scrub Cup. Uh, and actually someone else casted me and I was like, wow, this is really cool. <laughs> and I, I'd been watching esports for a long time. Like I was uh, watching since like season three LCK. I've been watching StarCraft even longer. I've been watching Quake and stuff like that. I've always loved that. And I've loved games and people comp competing against each other. So I decided I was gonna cast because I'm not the greatest player in the world, I'm gonna be completely honest. <laughs> um, so I went from there, I decided to cast. And actually one of my teammates, Vowels, I decided to cast with him for the first time. And I did a couple of games with him. It was really fun. I started doing um, some Newell matches, not actually for Newell, but for my university yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, outside of that. So, uh, and then over the year, I did some stuff for York. Uh, I did some events for Manchester as well. I'm in Newcastle University, so I've traveled around a bit. So that's been really fun. Uh, and now I'm ending up actually casting for the Newell and some other uh, organizations to do with university stuff, as well as broadcast.gg. That's pretty intense. That's pretty cool, though. So what's the goal? Goal is to become a professional caster. It always has been. Well, not always has been. Since I decided I wanted to be about last Christmas. Yeah, no, absolutely. Overwatch League, it's in your sights. It is. You're going to get there. That's right, of course. <laughs> and, uh, thanks so much for talking to us, and uh, good luck with the tournament. Thank you very much. So that was the BYOC Hall. Um, I did see something tragic on the last day. So there's a lot of security, obviously, with the BYC. So everything is like all tagged, uh, barcoded, <laughs> so people can't. No one's stealing take, GTX yeah. 1080 is. Yeah, so there's no yeah. one like taking anything. So everything gets searched on the way out by security. There's big tables to put your PCs on and things. Someone put their PC on a table, and as I was walking, I wasn't like near it, but I was walking away, and then you heard this massive bang. The table collapsed. And everyone, it just went silent. Everyone just looked around, and there you could see the table just collapse with the PC like sliding off it. I, I don't know what happened. People around me, we just like walked the other way quickly. Like, oh my god, oh, I don't wear makeup, I don't want to like, cry. <laughs> it, <laughs> it was like very hurts. painful. You don't know if it was battered uh, PC or. No, no, I, no idea. I, I mean, something's got to have broken from that drop. Uh, Rip motherboard. <laughs> people who want to take their yeah. PC out of the house are very brave. I would not be taking my PC out of the house. <laughs> you just got to look no. after it. I need therapy after that story. Yeah. <laughs> oh I mean, the, the, the sound was, that was not a nice sound. Not for a game. The thing <laughs> is, it's like, when we first put that clip up, you were like, I've got a, I've got a story of something tragic I need to say, but you didn't tell us. And so, you, like, the anticipation. That's been, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty horrific. Ready. I didn't think it was going to be that That'd bad. That would be my worst nightmare, just computer damage. 
That's I like. I wouldn't even move my PC an inch. Oh no, I wouldn't. Like, no, it stays on my desk. I definitely wouldn't take it to Birmingham. <laughs> like, no. Yeah, I, I yeah, I don't know what happened, but hopefully that PC is all right. But I, I think it's ripped for that, to be honest. Um, yeah, so BYC is is awesome. As you can see that you know there's whole groups of people, there's 17 of them in one group, just joining each other for massive LAN parties and people. Yeah. I think some people just sleep at their desks as well. I mean, yeah, they I can mean, get hotels. The yeah, they if you watch, camping. if you watch someone of those videos again, all I see was like cans and cans of energy drinks. Oh energy my god, I sat beer. down at like, my friend's desk. Me up. And he had a space next to him, and it was just like food and empty cans yeah. and stuff. I don't feel like I, I'm not jealous of the people who have to like go and clean all that stuff up. Yeah. I mean, you get a free ticket if you want it, but I wouldn't want to do it. No. <laughs> and also, you can, uh, I think there's an app or a website you can go on, you can order food to yes. your desk. There so, were menus and stuff, yeah, and you can easy. you can like order the stuff straight to your, yeah. your and desk. And people come around the trolley. Yeah. I've got that at my house, but I don't have to use a phone, I just go, Mum! Pizza, she goes. Oh, some of us don't live fine. with our parents. <laughs> some of us use Uber Eats like adults. <laughs> um, do you know what it is? That's funny. Uber Eats has London. The Uber Eats it has London, and I live just on the Burr. side that's outside. Oh, see, I live in literally, central London, so I don't know. It literally that. avoids me like this. Like, this is Uber Eats, and as you know, she goes, so like, it goes, you can watch the I'll show street. you. I'll show you. It's actually hilarious. I have to that's, walk off. I'll show you a lot. Oh my god, damn it. All right, guys, it's coming up to, well, not quite the end of the show, but um, the, I'd say one of the best parts. This is my favourite bit, now, 100%. Drone, I'm so excited. <laughs> drone combat flight ball. Something brand new that has n never been done before, and it is literally drones fighting each other playing football. It's so, flying Rocket League. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, like, it's like doing Rocket League for real. And, um, but not we, on the floor. No, not on the floor. No You're wheels. Flying drones to be around. fair, I think most of us spent half the time on the floor. Yeah. Look, basically, I spent all my time being like having my drone picked up, going into the wall, having my drone picked up, going into the other wall. <laughs> While everyone else was actually doing stuff, I was just like... <laughs> you were the distraction. Yeah. They were looking at you like, what's this tactic going on? I don't think I was anything, <laughs> to be fair. Well, that's what I we was, wanted them to think. I was dead weight. Well... First of all, we got an interview with one of the co-founders to kind of explain a bit more about what this uh, flight ball is. So we're going to go into that first and then we'll talk more about the fight that we had because, um, yeah, just by chance we were up against some pretty awesome people. So let's do the interview first and then we'll come back for the uh, fight afterwards. So we're here with James Waite and he is the co-founder of Drone Combat and this behind us is Flight Ball, which is, their ga which is one of their game modes. So tell us more about the game mode first of all. Yeah, this is uh, effectively aerial football for drones. It's kind of like Rocket League, but for real. Uh, so we've got a helium-filled ball that sort of bounces around like it was on another planet. Uh, and the idea is very simply to hit it very hard with a drone and drive it into your sort of opponent's back net. Teams of five? Uh, teams of five is how we set it, but it'll work well for four, depending on the size of the arena, really. And we've been really lucky here because it goes all the way up. Yeah. So we were privileged enough to see the first ever Premier launch game because this is the first time they've actually opened this up and let people play. So we just watched the first game. It was very crazy. The, the maddest thing, I think, was there was uh, the marshals that were looking after the drones because obviously drones go upside down and crash and get stuck. And uh, yeah, they were getting pummeled from time to time and it was really entertaining. So tell me, uh, how did you uh, start this uh, how did you start this game? I mean, it's just so interesting. What was your inspiration? Well, my colleague Bill, the co-founder, was one of the sort of Robot Wars veterans. So that's back in the 1990s. Right. Uh, he was involved with his son at the time. They had a, a, a robot in that competition. Uh, and he sort of been, then went off into TV, and I've been in sort of TV and entertainment and computers. And we got together a couple of years ago thinking, you know what? You know, drones are, sorry, taking off. Uh, and the really interesting thing about them is, what you find is you get a drone, you take it out of the box, you fly it, usually on your own, and you try not to hit anything at all, yeah? So we thought, why don't we just turn that on its head? All get together, fly it with your friends, fly it against a team, and smash into anything you possibly can. So that was the beginning of a kind of two-year road to design the cages that go around the drones to let them take that kind of punishment. And that's a sort of, you know, a registered design that we've come up with. How well it withstands the uh, competition, we'll find out. But over in the far end there, we've got a team of probably the best drone engineers in the UK who we've partnered with who are busy with the 3D printers making the spare parts and kind of making sure that all the motors are good and the props are good and so on. So that's about it. Yeah, sounds like we've got it all sorted out. So hopefully we'll get a chance to play. What are you looking forward to uh, experiencing, Gio? Well, I'm kind of looking forward to even trying to fly a drone. I've never done it before. So I feel like everybody else is going to be, you know, doing all these aerobatics while I'm just trying to figure out how to go up. 
but uh, <laughs> I don't know. Is it an easy thing to, to get into? You know what? I, I, I'll say this. I'm, I'm not going to put a number on it, but anyone of a certain generation who's grown up with sort of joysticks tends to get, get it really quickly. Uh, people with sort of grey hair like me, it takes us a little longer. I kind of reverse it out of the garage very slowly and think I've done well. Uh, but no, I mean, the main thing, of course, is don't oversteer. These are incredibly sensitive things, and you know, and it's like flying an airplane. So if you start it rolling, it just keeps on rolling. So you've got to correct it and so on. So what most people tend to do is go, oh right, oh, left, oh, up, down, and so on, and then you see the consequences. But after a little while, you get good. Yeah. Oh, you get good. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure I'm going to be part of that. One thing I have to ask is, you, you've got this massive kind of arena here. So you say you like the idea of people playing with their friends and stuff, but obviously the average kind of back garden isn't really this. So do you see kind of a future where this becomes almost an e-sport or some kind of like team game where people can actually play it competitively? Uh, I, well, we've got, we've got a number of ideas. I mean, we want to keep an element of it always in the real world. Yeah? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this on tour. So we're going to go to all kinds of games and festivals and events and basically drum up the best we can of sort of interested groups of people who want to form teams and get really good. Um, we then kind of try get to try and ally it with the FAI, which is the um, Aeronautical Sports Federation, who, do, who run a drone racing league and have a companion league with them, and then next year run a world championship. So th there's that sort of festival thing, but to get everybody playing it, we want to basically make these drones really affordable, a couple of hundred quid, uh, provide netting or rent netting, and allow people to rig it up in gyms and you know all that sort of thing, school halls or whatever around the country. Has to be indoors because of the wind. Yeah, that's a good point. I was going to say, I look forward to the day where kids go to school and they, they come home from their PE lesson. They're like, I flew a drone today and our team won. <laughs> but so, so as for the, the future of it, that's, that's kind of where you see this going. Well, that's, I mean, that's for the sort of real world part of it. And of course, you know, we, we recognize too that, or we have experience, you'll see we've got a film crew here. I mean, it makes great television. You know, so because you've got point of view cameras in the drones and you can cut away. Oh, there's cameras in the drones? Ah, sure, yeah. Um, so you, when it strikes the ball, you can cut away, you can do wide shots, you've got the commentator and so on. So we're pushing in a direction to think about uh, televising next year's World Championships, uh, for sure. And then obviously, uh, no offer like this would be complete without an e-game version. Uh, so we're you know, interested and holding conversations with developers to think about a really smart way of turning this into a sort of parallel uh, e-league as well. Uh, okay, right, a question for both of you then. Uh, what kind of, if you if you were sort of alter the game type and make a slightly new game type, like using this as the basis, what what ideally would you want to see? Uh, well, I mean, I, I'm really interested in uh, keeping this as open source as possible. So, what we're going to do is all the CAD designs for the for the joins in the in the real world stuff. We're going to make available and encourage a sort of development community to modify them to improve the quality of the frame or its sort of you know its playability. And the same thing then online, the obvious parallel would be that then you can build a sort of trading system and marketplace for uh, developed parts. But what, what I'm really keen to do, and I'm just sort of finding my way in this, uh, is not to make it something that you can just buy your way to expertise. Uh, so it's not a case of just, oh, well, I've got 50 quid so I can buy all the stuff that's going to make yeah. me invincible. Or we want to kind of tie it to actually develop a contribution as well. So that's the, that's the direction I want to take it. How innovative that is, given you know, everything else that's here, I wouldn't say, you know, I wouldn't sort of make too many claims for it, but we're hoping that allied with the real world version, you know, it's uh, going to make quite a sort of convincing uh, game. Hey there, what about I you, think I would like to see uh, paintball guns or BB guns mounted to the drones and have like flying around. And obviously, if the camera's there, you could have something like maybe uh, like, a f like uh, one drone and like six people, yeah. and every time someone gets shot, yeah. they have to go and grab a drone until there's one guy left and he has to go and do something to try and win the game. Nice. Okay, it's really interesting. So the other TV thing we're messing about with is a thing called Drone Hunters, which is exactly that. There you go. So basically flying teams in the field and they're being tracked and chased. And they've got to by drones. By drones with, with paintballs and all that. Awesome. So yeah, man. Nerf guns, actually. In yeah, yeah. All yeah. lasers, so you go with a little detector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of Obviously the paint and the BB, a bit high risk. Yeah, on the, uh, health and safety, health and safety. Uh, uh, or yeah, 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 you know, of course. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's about the size of it. Um, I think the that's a really neat idea that we've experimented a lot. The thing with these drones is that I mean we've got one there. Can I can I grab it? Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure you can grab it. This is a, a prototype. This is a prototype. The ones we're actually playing with are much larger uh, than this. But the point about this stuff is when these are flying along, anything you force you put out that way makes this go backwards. This is, it, it's not, it's got not like you and I are anchored on the floor, so I could chuck this over here and I stay still. 
If I was floating in the air and I chuck that over there, I'm going to go over there. So that's an extra sort of complication when you're piloting. Yeah. You've got to recognize that yeah. you're not. So when you're firing stuff off it, that has a you know sort of impact on it. But yeah, that's these are the TPU joints that, that we've kind of developed the, the CAD designs for. Uh, and in fact, over there, they're 3D printing away uh, the replacements for when they inevitably pop out. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Do they pop out due to their extreme violence? I'm afraid so, yeah. <laughs> no, no doubt about it. Yeah. How long did it take you to design that? Well, we've been at it a couple of years. I think this design uh, we came up with about a year ago. Uh, I mean, we, uh, we've been through a few iterations, as you can imagine. We started out with sort of uh, sort of plastic, plastic biscuit tins, uh, <laughs> but they just smashed every time they took a hit. Uh, yeah. Then we went to sort of metal shopping baskets, sort of chicken wire oh. frames, which were great but dangerous. Uh, and a bit heavy, so the batteries ran out. Uh, so we've come up with this, this is TPU plastic and these carbon fiber rods, and that so far is the combination we're working with. Nice. Uh, thank you very much for talking to us, James. I wish you the best of luck, and I'm very looking forward to hope having a go, maybe on the same team as G. I don't know what, the, <laughs> I don't know what our arrangement's gonna be. We'll see, uh, yeah, we'll see. Maybe I'll be teammates. Be yeah, it could be war, we'll <laughs> see. But thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for, for chatting with me, and uh, I'm at Joe, good luck. Yeah? Thank you very much. So hopefully that um, gave you a little introduction as to uh, what flight ball is. Um, we, I think, well, as soon as we saw it, it was just amazing. Like we, we got there just yeah. in time for the first game of the day as well, uh, which was the first ever game. Yeah. Um, which was just kind of like nuts to watch. Like it's just, just so good. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, and then so we, after the interview, we were like, can we have a go? And so we signed up for a particular time. By the time it came to that, they said, well, actually, um, we're really far behind because. We underestimated how bad people were at flying drones, and they just could not keep up with the repairs and printing all the printing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So originally they wanted to do three games per hour. Yeah, yeah. they wanted to fit in a lot, and then they went it down to two, and then it was down to down one. Down to one. But yeah. anyway, we managed to get in and uh, get uh, get a game, and it just happened to be that we were up against Grant Hines. Happy days and Sean O'Connor. Yeah, oh. it was like was really weird. Like we ran into Grant and we were like, oh. "Yeah, thank you, real Turkey. Appreciate <laughs> yeah. that. Big up. So I see him. He's, he was jeering up my beard. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that magnificent beard. Real and, Turkey. And, and we smashed them. Yeah, and we. I mean, I didn't. But everyone <laughs> else did. But um, they they they've now gone back into a lot more uh, research and development into the drones because obviously they're they're still quite robust but obviously not robust enough yeah yeah there's so, a lot more that can change yeah they're, they're doing a lot of work now and i think they're going, going to be back at the nec at the beginning of december for the drone show and then they're going to do some other events maybe come back to insomnia so yeah let's go. i hope so that would be, yeah. that'd be fantastic cool. it was uh it was, it was like super unique it took so much space but it like people yeah. were so into it they had like every single game there was a big audience the yeah. guy who was commentating it had so much energy like i don't know how he like, it was a lot that well, really he good. Was yeah, it was good and especially when drones came and attacked him and he would sort of like duck out of the way and like it would yeah. be part of the humor like i mean he, on the last he just had such a good sense of humor about yeah it. It, it was great on the last day he actually his voice was gone i mean oh, he, he, oh, that he, was funny he, he was laughing about that he was screaming he's like, yeah. ah, ah, ah. I think, like that's just like a throwback to when yeah. we were talking to the casters as well and they were like yeah our voices are just shot like that's just what happens at, at i-63 or any insomnia for that matter i mean even when i got home from birmingham like i lost my voice completely Right, so here is uh, the footage from our fight with um, oh, against the YouTubers. Is all my loud noises in there? Which ones? Oh, I was making I was making so much noise. No. no. <laughs> right, well, okay, good, good, good. Yeah, this is PG friendly. Enjoy. So this is happening right now. We've got Caffeine Gaming over here and here versus the, the rest of us that have been walking around, uh, hanging around the thing, and I know who's going to win. Us. Caffeine Gaming. <laughs> no, have yeah. you flown a drone before? Everyone, everyone's no. gonna win. We're all winners. Caffeine Gaming's gonna win. But in another so way, we're gonna be the winners. Party. I am gonna get PTSD. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I can't even top that. that was... <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're gonna do this. I'm excited to see what happens. So we're here at the Flight Ball Arena. We're getting ready to have our Caffeine Gaming versus the YouTubers. So we've got Grant Hines, Alfie Days, and Sean O'Connor. Are you ready to lose? I am, what, no! This is a bad victory. We're gonna kick your asses. So Caffeine you're ready Gaming's to lose, down. basically. No, 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 listen here. I, I know how to fly a drone, and I'm pretty good at flying a drone, and I played Rocket League, and this is kind of the two put together, so I think that I can do pretty well. 
basically, I'm getting some overcompensation. I think you're ready to leave. Let's find out. <laughs> We beat the YouTubers. Thank you. 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 Thank So, yep, we were victorious. <laughs> Simple as that. Yes. We were just much better. Final score, yeah, was 2 0. Um, I think. Yeah, yeah they didn't do very well. Yeah. No, they were. The thing is, before the actual match, there was so much trash talk. Yeah. And, and I, so there was a bit of trash talk with everyone, but I was chilling. And then when it comes <laughs> to game time, when we won, I'd made a lot of noise. When we scored, it was just noise, noise, noise. The thing is, yeah. it's like you you were prepared to like bring out all the trash talk at the end. Like well, you, yeah. You, yeah. you would not shut up about how <laughs> good you are at flying drones. I know, I was getting ready to go over there and throw some shade, but they half of them disappeared straight after the game, so I just went in the mirror and just it threw was shade at myself. Harry who threw the shade at the beginning. Yeah, I know, I know. He like, even got his camera out and was saying, these are the guys who are about to What was smack. it? He was like, he was like uh, you're going to get so trashed by caffeine gaming that you're going to get PTSD yeah. every time you drink a coffee. <laughs> That's what everyone's been saying, I know. Yeah, sure. brilliant. Um, yeah. I'll turn that into a t-shirt, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, but yeah, I think that was definitely one of the highlights for me. Yeah, 100%. That um, was a lot of fun. Best of luck to uh, Drone Combat. I think they've definitely got yeah. a lot of stuff to go on. Oh, yeah, they've definitely got, a, they got something. Going. Yeah, make, make sure you guys check uh, Drone Combat out. And uh, I think uh, Twitter's at Flightball. But I'll, yeah, we've been tweeting them all week. And... Um, the details will be in the YouTube videos as well, but yeah, check check them out. Make sure you follow them, and um, hopefully, yeah. Caffeine Gaming will get round two as well. Yeah, more people hopefully up. we can do it again. Cause Maybe awesome. I'll actually be able to like do like go forward and not yeah off Practice. to the side. There yeah. must be. Is oh, it... Let me go to my local drone arena. Oh no, just Practice. go like digital drone simulator or something. I'm sure that must exist, right? There's a drone racing league simulator. Yeah, really, yeah. really hard. <laughs> um, it's not like flying these drones. Yeah. yeah. Um, because you have to keep the throttle up to actually stay up instead of, you know, I was like auto Oh, I don't even drive. Like, this is too much for my small brain. Do you even drone? Oh, man. Oh, dear. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're coming towards the end of the show now. Uh, so I want to say a big thank you to, obviously, Meltdown for letting us stream here. Uh, obviously, thanks to Insomnia for letting us go there as press. Um, definitely going to be at I-64 and hopefully you guys are going to be there as well because it is just yeah, it it's a great event great yeah it was event. fantastic um, thanks to all the new followers um, been seeing you come in um, please thanks do thanks to Geo and Armour Geo <laughs> say thank you to you guys in a bit but thanks to these guys <laughs> yeah obviously thanks to these guys for all the interviews that they did at Insomnia and for turning up today thank you he only just turned up today. No, I made it. Just. Like, Still just. fine. No problem. Wow, Aaron just. is dirty laundry. It's just the beard. It's all about the beard. Um, 
if you yeah please do guys follow us on Twitter uh, Facebook Instagram what else is there come join us on Discord follow um, us down the street obviously check check us check our website out caffeinegaming.com for all your gaming news uh, we've got lots of articles from lots of contributors uh, writing about all sorts of things um, and we've got content going out every week so that's great if you guys want to become a producer of the show you can do by going uh, at the bottom of Twitch there's a Patreon link you can uh, click on the one of the producer roles and help back us and just yeah help produce the show so I think that is pretty much it um, we do have one little video afterwards and then after the video or the outro uh, we're going to do a little raid on Sunday as well so stick around and uh, thank you so much guys for watching and uh, we will be back I think beginning of October uh, because we're going to EGX at the end of the month well I am I'm at Ed, you're in Paris I'm going to Paris yeah for some Overwatch stuff <laughs> funny World Cup yeah what's, what's Overwatch? Overwatch it's World like Cup. an indie game <laughs> Um, but yeah guys thank you so much for watching and yeah here's the last video and then stay around on chat because we're going to do a little raid bye guys alright guys hold up <laughs> We're back. OBS is not not behaving. Um, this is actually funny though, because it makes Ahmed look bad and me look good. Me look bad? Yeah. Why? <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> um, give us a sec. I'm trying to work this out. I'm going to go back to the outro video and see if it works. I don't know why it's not working. So we've come to the end of I-63, we've seen some awesome games, we've spoken to some awesome people, there have been some amazing lands going on, but sadly it's come to an end and we're really going to miss it. Yeah, 100%. I need to go and see the doctor because my hands are clamming up, because literally I've been playing non-stop <laughs> games. I've had a great time, I'm absolutely knackered, only because I've just been smashing it hardcore, 100% every single day. <laughs> but yeah, like uh, Gio said, I'll definitely be missing this. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us, I've been Gio. I'm Ahmet. This has been Caffeine Gaming. And we will see you at Insomnia 64. So thank you for joining us. I've been Gio. I've been Armit. This has been Caffeine Gaming. And we'll see you at I-64. That's your line. Okay, so here... W <laughs> so we're here. We are here. Yes, we are. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Hopefully. Nice to see you guys. Did it record? Oh my god. He's joking. Oh my god. Oh my god, holy <laughs> shit. I thought you were like, I was actually gonna like punch you. I thought I'd not do it. Oh my god. Holy shit. I was just like. I'm just gonna be like, no. Look, look, I mean, the thing is, I'm gonna remember what I said so many times, so I'm gonna be able to do this interview, like, <laughs> by heart, like, to everyone. Oh, <laughs> oh for God's sake. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Alright guys, we're just gonna raid a friend of ours. Alright guys, we're just gonna raid a friend. Is it doing it? Did it do it? I don't know. What? 11 people! 
11, it's 28.